Welcome to TGIF. We all do it. <laughs> you do it too. You know what I'm going to say. <coughs> we complain. <coughs> we complain. We don't like this. We don't like that. But we can't just say we don't like this or we don't like that. A lot of times we are always takes us to the word of the day, which is whiny. Wah, wah, wah. And I know, I do it. I do it. Me too. So where's that gonna take us in numbers? Do we have any whining happening? We do, and if you're at all familiar with God's people and the early time in the wilderness and the famous manna from heaven, then you know about whining. We are looking at Numbers chapter 11, verse one. Now, when the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes, the Lord heard it and his anger was kindled. Drop down to verses four through six. Just a couple of clips that I want you to remember. If only we had meat. Or what about this one? Our strength is dried up and there is nothing for us but this manna. You know, it's... God provided for them, and they remembered back to Egypt when, yeah, there were some perks, you might call them, mm. because guess what? Fish was free if you were a slave. Or some of the fruits, fresh fruits, were free, but you were a slave. Mm. And they could not put that back in perspective in this moment, and God hears this complaining. And when he hears it, it just, you know, I can imagine. It's mm -hmm. pretty irritating because when we are complaining, right. whining, what do we do? Whether it be each other or a family member or your job, mm -hmm. there's always people whining and complaining. So there is a little bit of difference though too between complaining mm -hmm. and criticizing. And it seems like both of those, when you look through the Bible, complaining and criticizing, those are the two things that God does not mm -hmm. like. He does not like a complainer. He does not like criticism. And the reality is that this is the God that provides. You know, I think of the song, you're a God that provides. And the God that provides, we should find ourselves in attitudes of humbleness and thankfulness. And yet here we have uh, just a, a perfect instance where God provides and God has a plan, mm -hmm. but the people can't see it mm -hmm. and they can't live into what God wants. But what about when God does not provide in the way we want. Mm. What's our response? Why? Complain. We get stuck. Yeah, we get stuck. We and, just complain and criticize about everything. And just like in Egypt, when they were having the fish and the fruit, you know they were complaining about being slaves you know at that were. moment. You know they and were. then fast forward, here we are, not a slave, but instead of recognizing and being thankful, we have, we are out of slavery. Now it's complaining about manna. I think that's just our human nature. If it's not exactly what, when we want and how we want it. Yeah. And how do we get beyond that? Mm. The stories in the Bible are a good example. Well, look where, look where they were, look where they are. And, and we on this side of the story can say, seriously, slavery versus non-slavery. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever you're eating, at least you're eating. That should have been, we can say that, but in the moment, no. Usually when you see complaining in the Bible too, it's just because people are unhappy. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's, that's a, a brokenness of the fallenness of the world. Lots of unhappiness. And that's not how God calls us to be. When mm -hmm. we're a child of God, we are not called to be unhappy in that way. We can be unhappy about things, but there's a side of it that has this thankfulness and this gratitude mm -hmm. that goes with it. So even when you're unhappy, you understand the circumstances. They could have, have appreciated the mm -hmm. moment so much more. God, thank you for bringing this out. Thank you for providing this food. Thank you, thank you, thank you for creating you know, each of us. And it's, it's that understanding that that's where we start with a conversation with God. Mm -hmm. The difference is we take complaining then to criticizing. We live in a world that criticizes mm -hmm. everything. So what's the difference? What's the difference in the criticizing? Criticizing is this is what's wrong with this. God, you didn't do it my way. You didn't do it this way. This is how it should have been done. That's a criticism. That's a criticism of God. That's, that is not what we are called to be as people of God. Because yeah, that's just 
that's just basically saying, I don't trust what you're doing and that you are working. Yeah. Where we should look into every situation, the good ones and the hard ones and everything in between and say, okay, God, where can I find you in the midst? And sometimes it's hard Very in hard. the middle it's of really hard. you know serious illness and tragedy and brokenness and relational. I mean, the list is huge because we all deal with things, but saying, okay, all of this, I don't get it. I'm not happy about it. But instead of that criticizing, complaining mindset, I don't like any of it, but God, I know you're there. Just maybe just saying, I know you're there. Mm -hmm. Jesus, mm -hmm. I know you are there. And start from that vein. And then, yes, your prayers are going to be specific. And God tells us we can mm -hmm. ask in his name. Absolutely. But as long as we are recognizing who he is and trusting who he is before we get to what we want. And that's what I think they were missing in this uh, little manna story. Yeah, and so in chapter 12 then, which this, this, this is our episode, 11 and 12, 12 has an interesting dynamic when it comes to family dynamics. Because you have Aaron, Moses, and Miriam, right? The perfect little family, right? I mean, they've gone through a lot, and they have stuck together. But yet there's a dynamic that goes on here in chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And it's Aaron and Miriam come criticizing, criticizing Moses. Mm -hmm. uh, a little jealousy maybe, probably, mm -hmm. but Moses does something and they criticize it and then they actually lift that criticism to God and say, you know, well, who are we? We were there in the beginning too. Why isn't God speaking mm -hmm. to us? Rather than being so thankful for Moses because in all of the land, God said, this is the most humblest man of all the, in all the land. So God chose him, God picked him, God knew. But yet, Miriam and Aaron couldn't be thankful for that. They had to criticize uh, criticize him, which constructive criticism, mm, <laughs> or just criticism on the individual. So it's hard. There is this fine line we're walking, people. I mean, people of God have got to stay on the side of, erring on the side of, God, I trust you put this person here. Help me to see what they're doing. Help me to be thankful for them rather than just criticizing and putting it out to mm -hmm. whole community about what you're unhappy about. And we see that in the life of the church. All the time. All throughout the entire week, not just on Sundays. Right. And we say it's constructive criticism, but I challenge you to check your constructive criticism comments because a lot of times they are... A, for uh, self-gain. We call it constructive, but it's a self-gain of what I want. And that's it, it's a fine line. Even as a staff, we are really struggling with this one to understand what it means to be in collaboration with each other. Mm -hmm. That means you make space for the other. You make space for the other's ideas and other, um, other concepts maybe even, but staying true to the biblical word, staying true to God's word, that's so important. And so I think that we can learn from this little family dynamic here mm -hmm. that it works within our own families for mm -hmm. sure, and within the church family. It's how do we collaborate together in, a, in an atmosphere of thankfulness for God, mm -hmm. thankful for that God has brought this person to our community and begin to work together to form something that is truly the seed of God at work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the question, what choice do you have but to complain or criticize? That's it, huh? We're done. Just complain, criticize, go for it. Just what notice. kind of life is that? No but life at all. We know those people. Yeah. Sometimes we are, are those people. people. Sure. Complain and criticize. So whine right now, get over your whining, move on, and each and every day allow the Word of God and the presence of the Holy Spirit to call you to a thankfulness, an attitude of gratitude and thankfulness for Christ in your life for God's perfect plan, even in the midst of circumstances that it's so easy to complain and compare and criticize and whine. Trust that God's got this all figured out and allow the word of God to speak to you each and every day. Have a great week and we'll see you next time on TGIF. Bye.